What is going on everyone? My name is Jared and today we are looking again at the gaming laptops that I have. So on this side right here is the Alienware 17 inch R5. This is the 2018 model. The Intel 8750H mobile processor has a GTX 1070 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. All fit in a 17 inch UHD screen. On this side of me here we have the Asus uh, this is a 15-inch laptop, which has the Intel i7700HQ, has a GTX 1060 with uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. So they are similar spec. This is a last year laptop, a 2017. Obviously, this is a new 2018. Really, obviously, the GTX 1060 and 1070 are going to be different, but I want to see actually how the CPU is really handled, as well as heat and gaming performance, and if the screen matters and just the difference between Asus and Alienware. So let's get a closer look, run some tests, and see what we find out. So while I was waiting, I've been letting Heaven Benchmark run for quite a long time now. So these laptops are very different. This has the 1070, this has the 1060. I'm more concerned about heat and I'm more concerned about how the CPU makes a difference. So what I did is I set both screens to be the same resolution, which is 1920 by 1080, which is the normal resolution of the Asus. This does have 120 hertz panel and this one does not. Uh, the main thing I'm worried about is heat, not necessarily frame rate, because with the 1070, it is certainly going to do a better job. Uh, I'm not going to really run their benchmark because I know this one's going to come out on top. But the main reason for this test is how hot it got and how loud it got. Alienware does promote this new vapor chamber technology for cooling. And right now, this has been running for about five minutes, I would say. It is sitting at a steady between 63 and 60 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, the Asus is at 74, so low 70s. Certainly higher, 10 degrees is a big difference. As far as frames are concerned, you're looking at around 50 and around 70 to 80 here, which is, you know, anything above 60 is certainly playable. So moral of this test, Heaven Benchmark, you can run on anything that you guys have. Uh, and get a kind of a feel for what a game load would be versus a synthetic load, which will just fill up your CPU and fill up pretty much everything in your system and make it work extra hard. This would be a more realistic sort of test of how this laptop would do. As far as heat, touching this laptop really is warm to the touch. It is not nearly as warm as the Asus. It does have to do with, you know, a lot of what Alienware has done with cooling. So... We are going to close and quit out of both of these. And now we are going to run Cinebench. So Cinebench is a good test for CPU performance. It is what I use when I'm trying to work on overclocks. It is a great utility. Again, it's a free utility that everyone can use to see what their CPU stacks up with. Uh, among the competition, they give you some rankings on the side I do have, I had made sure that everything in the task manager is closed, just the essentials, because a lot of times the Alienware, uh, Sync, the resource manager, all this stuff does obviously use valuable resources. So just to recap, we have the Intel i7-8750H CPU, which is the new one. Alienware, you can actually get an overclocked processor. That is the i9, and you can tell by the K letter after the H. The K usually stands for overclocking when you're purchasing an Intel CPU. So this is a 6-core, 12-thread, running at 2.21 gigahertz. Obviously, Windows, I don't know why it says Windows 8, but it's Windows 10, GeForce GTX 1070. This has the Intel i7-7700HQ, which would be last year's you know, good contender, four cores, eight threads at 2.81, 64-bit uh, operating system, and the 1060. So we are just going to run the CPU test and see how that goes. So I run this on my Ryzen Threadripper build, and it just absolutely annihilates through this. 
I'm sure the Threadripper Gen 2 is going to crush it. And you can see right now the new Intel is doing a really good job compared to last year's offering. Uh, this will give you an arbitrary score. And we'll see how it is. For reference, my Threadripper is around 3,300 uh, for its Cinebench score. And the Alienware is just about to wrap up. And you are looking at 1,195. 1, so that is putting it ahead of CPUs such as the Intel Core i7-4070 4770K CPU, which is a desktop. It is putting it right underneath the 12-core 24-thread Intel Xeon X5650, which is at 1270. In comparison, Cinebench on the Asus, which is the i7-7700, is coming in at 744. So that is a big difference between these two, and that is just a CPU test. There is little GPU running on that on any of these tests. It is more of a, a CPU heavy. And what does that say? So obviously we have two more threads. We have two more cores, four more threads on the CPU. I'm gonna fire up the resource manager real quick to show you guys what is actually happening as far as the temperatures go. So both of these have the different, uh, different resource centers. You got the gaming center for Asus and you have the Alienware Center or Command Center for Alienware. So we are sitting at a nice 2.1 gigahertz for the CPU at 44 degrees Celsius just after running the test and we are looking at 49 degrees at around 2.7 gigahertz um, for the Asus. Temperature of the GPU, not that it really matters. We got 40 degrees on the Alienware, 50 degrees on the Asus. So while it is opening, let's run Cinebench one more time and see what the temperatures do. So this is a quick, short load. I'll put both of these on here. So you can see it spiked up as far as what the actual core temperature is. We're up to 80, 79, and 80 over there, 81. As you can see, your GPU did pick up a little bit of heat. That is also because it, you know, it's shared in the same space, so you're getting some ambient heat from in, with the, in the case, how it's cooled, if the heat pipes are connected. So this went to 44, that was at 54. We're looking at 82 and 81. So pretty close. We're going at 3.8 gigahertz over here, and we are getting 3.3 boost on the Asus. And obviously it's going to jump around a bit. So now you are up to 82 degrees Celsius over there. And this finished. So now you're going back to 44 or so. This got much, much hotter. And then it drops to 61, 53, 52, 51. So they cool off extremely quick. And you're looking at your around your load temperature. It's going to be around like 40 and about 50 respectively uh, with that. So in this utility for Asus, we're going to kind of forget about the, uh, we're going to forget about the Asus. We're going to focus more on the Alienware right now. Um, in this utility, you have, let me move the camera in. So what's up to the camera, Nala? <laughs> um, so in this utility, you can do a lot of different things. If you had the i9, this would be where you could overclock uh, on the slider scale, so you have the overclock tab here, but seeing that this is not an unlocked processor, you can't do it. You also have your different thermal profiles for how your fan runs. I leave it on performance. I'd rather have it be loud and cooler than not as cool and hot burning my legs. So there's that. You obviously have your plug-in settings. You have your speaker uh, adjustment and the speakers are pretty good, and you also have the audio recon, which I usually don't use. This is to show auditory uh, examples while playing games, show you where the noise is coming from. Uh, overall, I've played on this. I've used this for video editing. It chews through edits. It absolutely annihilates. Uh, does a really good job. I've had no problems with drop frames, rendering 4K footage. 
Uh, obviously, the fans do speed up and they spin up quite a bit, but I really don't necessarily mind that if it's going to be doing a good job. The GTX 1070 in this has also been doing a great job. Uh, I will say that in playing games uh, that I'm putting it to the ultra high def display, it you know, does it doesn't get a full 120 frames. Obviously, you're going to be cruising around 60, a little under 60, especially with a 1070 trying to push that 1440p preset. That is a lot for it to do, uh, especially being in a in a laptop chassis where there isn't a lot of cooling. But it still does do a good job. In most games, if you have either uh, high or ultra, it'll definitely bust it out on 1080p and. Maybe if you drop it down to high or medium to high with turning off some very key things, you're going to get a really good result out of gaming uh, on this machine. For a price, I've absolutely, I don't think you could find a lot of times a better price for a computer like this. I did customize it through Dell, so it wasn't just a uh, pre-built, something that I bought from Best Buy or things of that nature. It was absolutely something that I kind of picked out together, uh, the black color, the QHD, or the UHD screen, uh, 1070, things like that, 16 gigs of RAM versus 8. So I did have my hand in it, and it cost $2,200, all said and done. Dell did have some great deals going on. They had, uh, I think it was $600 off. I got $300 back in rewards. So I was able to get a backpack and a mouse for free after I, I bought the machine. Um, you know, you can go on Newegg, you can find a lot of machines similar to this, and obviously this year, the new 8750H uh, processor is going to be in a lot of laptops. But as far as from what I've seen from the Alienware, I mean, you do have Tobii eye tracking, you have an amazing build quality from Alienware, very solid. You get a little bit of flex up here, but, you know, really rigid everywhere else. When you get a thin and light, you end up getting a laptop that is going to flex in some spots, it was a factor that I kind of did want to try the new Razer, but at the time I didn't get it, and pound for pound, dollar for dollar, this was a way better value, having better cooling, having a full 1070 versus a 1060, pushing that screen. This has the better resolution, 120 hertz. The other one had a 1080p, 144 hertz from Razer, and you were paying good money to get that. So all said and done, I've had a great experience with this Alienware. You know, I could run benchmarks through this all day, um, but really, as far as what I'm concerned and what I'd like to share with you guys is from a day-to-day -day performance, an everyday gamer, someone who wants to work on this, someone who has professional editing to do on this, you're not going to be disappointed. It is going to work absolutely fantastic for you. It is certainly going to get the job done and it is going to absolutely be worth your money. You know, you go with a thinner laptop, it might not cool as good. You go for a real big laptop, you know, spending tons of money, and you might be better spending that elsewhere, maybe on a desktop or something like that. You could have went all out on this. I think the biggest one is around $3,000 or a little bit more than $3,000. That is with the overclocked i9, you know, all the bells and whistles, and that would absolutely be a desktop replacement. But coming in right at $2,000... Uh, you can edit, you can do photography, you can game, you can bring it with you. It is pretty big, it is pretty heavy, but if you brought this with you, I wouldn't be disappointed with the performance. I wouldn't feel like I was missing anything if I was working away from home. Absolutely bring your power brick with you because you will need it. Battery life on a machine like this isn't so great. A few hours off battery if you're trying to do something like video editing or less. And if you're just kind of browsing, you might get three or four hours generally uh, just kind of cruising around the internet. So anyway, I am going to wrap up this video here. My verdict for this Alienware laptop is absolutely fantastic. I would 100% buy it again rather than other offerings. Now, you know, MSI has great laptops, Asus, Alienware, Gigabyte, um, you know, you name it now, gaming laptops are around. Origin, Digital Storm has, you know, custom laptop creators. Why I bought this was it had a good deal. Alienware has been around for a long time. Yeah, I know they were bought out by Dell, but they're still doing it really good. They're still innovating. They got a great cooling setup. 
It is a little thicker, but you know what? I think what you're getting here is certainly quality. Not that my Asus over there is a bad machine, but I would say for the few hundred dollars difference that these two laptops cost, I would pick the Alienware any day because it just does a little bit more. It has a little bit more power and it wasn't that big of a price difference. It has nice convenient features such as the external dock connector in the back, which is Alienware proprietary, but still, you know, if I get done with my desktop and I said, gee, I don't really need this 1080 anymore, I could throw it in the in the dock, plug this in when I get home if I'm playing something, a new AAA game, which might need a little bit more power and it's there. You have stuff on this that you know you might not need now, but you might need it later. Plenty of I.O., all your ports, all your connectors, you got your Ethernet, your Thunderbolt 3, USB-A, your power, obviously, Kensington lock, you name it, it's got it. Upgradable memory, upgradable storage, it's all there. So really, I left this open to, obviously I can't put the i9 in, but I could certainly upgrade the memory to 32 gigs. I could upgrade the storage and you know this laptop is set to last me for quite a bit and it's performing on such a level that I don't have to worry about it. Uh, my first Alienware was had the mobile graphics. Now you know they're fitting full-size graphics cards in there. I don't know what analyses, but this is an absolute win for me. Well worth the money. I'm not mad that I spent it. I think uh, I really did get some good value out of this, and I plan on using it quite a bit. Uh, I, I took it with me traveling. It keeps up with, with a lot of desktops, especially ones made you know a few years ago, or even the last two, three years. You know this, this can compete. So anyway, the Alienware, the new one for 2018, has my vote. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I know this was a lengthy video of just looking at screens, but what we found out is this doesn't get too hot. It performs super well, and it absolutely annihilates last year's Intel i7 processor compared to this year's Intel i7 processor. GPUs are a different story, but processor to processor, cooling for cooling, this does a fantastic job. So Alienware, you got my vote, you got my business, and for everyone out there, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you again in the next one.